welcome back to my channel and welcome to my favorite video of the month, my BoxyCharm unboxing for October. How did we get this far in the year? I don't know, but what's in the box? If you happen to be new to my channel or you just can't remember how I do my BoxyCharm unboxings, I have a twist on how I do so many of these videos. Yes, I open the box, I tell you everything I got, I do long wear tests, and, and there's more, I do a deep dive online to let you know what other actual users of these products are saying because sometimes, as many of you know, I get that later in the month, I have oily combo-y skin and a lot of people have dry skin, different climates, different environments, the whole thing. So I like to give you as much information as I possibly can about the products of BoxyCharm and I get three boxes every single month. So I tend to give variety, but as we all know, BoxyCharm is doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on all the products. So, I do the best I can to give you as much information possible. And yes, there's also a giveaway. Every month I love to do a giveaway for you guys because I get so many products and I live in a tiny house, a legit tiny house on wheels. So I really try hard to keep my collection as curated as possible. And this month there are so many giveaway items I cannot wait to tell you about. Some things I'm a little heartbroken about because they came in my premium box and I was really wanting to try them, but I don't think some of them are cruelty free. So my loss is your gain and stay tuned to hear what you're gonna be getting in this giveaway. All the information you need to know on how to enter the giveaway is in the description box. But as a law-abiding citizen here on YouTube, I do need to let you know that yes, I do get one PR box every single month from BoxyCharm. That's how I'm able to do a lot of these giveaways for you guys. And I love working with them and they gave me so many great things this month that I actually got a duplicate box from the one I buy and the PR box. So you guys are gonna get a lot of the items you're gonna see me talking about and that I've tried for about a week now on my face. And some of them I'm really, really excited to tell you about. If you do not get BoxyCharm, but you think you might like to try it, I do have a link below. It is an affiliate link. Don't feel pressured to use it, but I do get a small commission from it. It's like tipping your fellow YouTuber for doing all of this work behind the scenes for you. I'll also have some information about BoxyCharm and their variety of boxes because I do get the base box, the premium box, and the luxe box when available, but that is every quarter. So let's get into this month's pile of goodies and some things that aren't such goodies. Let's get into it. Grab your tea, grab your snack, grab your water, get comfy because these are longer videos. So let's dive in. Let's do it. The first box I got was one of the base boxes and I was so excited to see a face palette, skincare, a primer, a sponge, and some lip products all in this one box. Lots to dive into. The way I have started my face this morning and a few other mornings was with two of the items from this box. The first one being a Farsali Quench Moisture Replenishing Serum. When I get things like this in the box, I always sit there and ponder for a minute. Should I keep this? Should I just give it to a friend already before I use it? Should I stick it in the giveaway? Because I previously being nothing but an oil slick kind of girl, always kind of worry for some reason about Farsali products. I've just heard so many kind of polarizing things for people with my skin that have tried these products. But firsthand experience, I've had hit or miss experience with some of them. And then I just kept thinking, because I'm a little bit more combo, what if this is great for me? What if it is and you'll never find out unless you try it? So, you know, you gotta give it the old college try sometimes. This is supposed to hydrate and replenish and you're just supposed to put a few drops on some damp skin. I did that this morning and a few other mornings throughout the past week to see how I felt about it. And I actually have not had anything really negative happen with my makeup or skin. And as many of you know, I am a sensitive skin girl. So that is a big deal for me. Now this one I am gonna definitely dive into the online reviews to see what other people are saying with different types of skin, different environments. I do live in Tampa where it's a bit more humid, so moisturizers, I'm like, I go a little lighter hand with than maybe some other people. But I can tell you going forward, I'm gonna be a little bit more selective with the things I do deep dives with online because my videos have been a little over an hour long and I know a lot of you are like, yes, give me all the content, make it an hour, it sounds great. But I also know not everybody has time to sit through a whole hour of BoxyCharm items. So some of the things that are a little bit more generic, maybe I'll just kind of skim over, give you my review about, and but the, the things that really require the deep investigation 
don't worry, I'm still your girl and I'm here for you. This one I'm kind of dying to know what other people are saying because I don't think I've had enough time to actually notice if it's great. I don't think so far it's been like the best thing I've ever put on my face because I have a lot of other stuff in my collection that I like a lot. So I'm curious what other people are saying. For me, it's not pulled my makeup in a negative way and it's not really made my skin look great, but it's not given my skin any issues. So let's, let's, let's go online. Let's see what's happening. If you do not know, BoxyCharm also does add-ons now. And currently when I just clicked on this product, it is available for $9 with an add-on. Normally it's $24. So if you're interested and you didn't get it, might still be able to get it. Oh, the first review is from Amy C. And she said this dried way too fast. She says it smells good though and left her face feeling pretty soft. Diana C said, I really like this. It's moisturizing and I like the jelly texture. It was a bit more of a jelly serum-y formula than I was expecting. Super hydrating and light says Lauren. I love it. Heart eyes. I love it. Heart eyes says Kayla. Just kidding. Her name is Carla. I lied. Melissa L says three-ish hearts, maybe a sliver of the fourth. She says, I only use this a handful of times, but I didn't notice a difference to my routine. That's kind of how I feel about it. I'm not seeing anything crazy amazing and I'm not seeing anything bad. Um, I can tell you today I did not use my Becca soft blurring powder because I really wanted to see how all of these performed together. And I'm still very pleased to say that I don't think my bossy upfront pores are really coming through that harshly at all. Could be some of the other stuff I'm using though. So stay tuned. I've got a lot of goodies to talk about. I kind of feel Kelsey. She's like, I like this, but I have so many serums right now. I can only give this like three and a half, four hearts. So yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it too, but I'm always open to trying this because I really feel like this may come through for me in January and that's where I'm going to probably really be putting this to the test because that's really the only time it gets kind of cold here in Florida. Kimberly B said, I love that there isn't a scent. Oh, she's right. There is an absence of scent there and I do appreciate that. Very concentrated and spreads like a dream. Yes, I do agree. It just kind of like moves with your skin, especially if you use it as directed on damp skin. I quickly seal it all in with a moisturizer and it works well without causing acne or irritation. Good review, Kimberly. Thank you for that. I enjoy this so far. Like I said, nothing crazy amazing, but also nothing bad at all. So let me know if you got this, what your thoughts are down below because we're all learning from each other all the time. The next thing I'm going to let you know I used is the other other little serum-y guy here I got. This is the Soft Focus Glow Drops from Rodile. It's an illuminating ultimate glow primer. And this baby made me go, ooh, is it going to be too much glow? Again, I was oily AF up until like last year. So I still have those flashbacks of using too much glow and looking like, well, like a greasy grease ball. It's not pretty. It's not a Halloween costume. It's legit how my skin looks. This sucker is normally $60 and I was kind of curious about it because I've been a little bit more combo. I've noticed if I've been using some illuminating products in the base part of my makeup or skincare routine, that my makeup can actually look dewy without being oily now at this stage in my life. So I was like, I'm really curious and I've never tried anything. Have I tried something from Rodile? Maybe I have with a boxy charm, but not in recent memory. $60 MSRP made me curious about it along with the description that it says it's kind of just going to be a lit from within glow. That's generally how I enjoy glowing from my skin. So I'm curious what other people are saying. I've actually liked this. This one is the piece that stood out to me, I believe a week ago when I was trying it with one of my newer foundations and then some foundations I had already. I'm, you know, I like to try it with various things behind the scenes before I come on camera here with you. And today I'm even trying a newer foundation that I got from the BoxyCharm pop-up, but I'll quickly plug that. I'm not sure how I feel yet. This isn't a full review, but I did pick up the Natasha Denona Transform Matte Pore Vanishing Foundation. It's a little too dark for me. I got it in light medium 40N, but I have this underneath this and I'm pretty impressed. Like I said, with my pores, how my skin is looking, it doesn't look overly glowy. It just kind of looks nice and put together. So this is kind of been a nice combo with like three or four different foundations I've tried it with. So let's see what other people are saying online. I, I'm not angry at this right now. And in fact, I've kind of been pulling this to the front currently right now in add-ons. This is $9 in the add-on and it is still available at the time of filming this. So if you're interested, 
check it out. Jacqueline B said, I didn't notice a huge difference when I used this as a primer, but without makeup, it definitely leaves your skin with this dewy, fresh look. I didn't see much glow, says Caitlin R. Three hearts. Lindsay Z said, it's perfect for a dewy, glowy look. So I'm really thinking it really depends on the type of foundation you're using. Um, I mostly lately use more of the medium coverages, sometimes lighter. I can tell you I have tried it with the CoverGirl Olay Simply Ageless, which is one of my favorite drugstore ones. I've also tried it with the IT Your Skin But Better CC Plus Full Coverage Foundation, and now I have tried it with this Natasha Denona one. And it's looked really nice with all three of these, but it really depends on what, I guess, your expectations are as well. Do you want to be like crazy glowy? It depends on your skin. It's all subjective just like all makeup. Amanda R says it's so it has an okay smell, but not too strong. It has this like citrusy smell. And I did notice that. And for me, a smell is, I'm not too sensitive to smells as I usually let you know, but this one was kind of distracting, I guess, because I wasn't expecting it. Ronnie R said, I love this so much. I had to get another one probably because she got it on a crazy great deal from 60 bucks to like, what, nine? It wears so nicely under makeup and gives my skin a luminous glow. And I didn't find I looked oily with this at all. I like great endorsements like that. And I can really back that up at this point. I agree. Okay, one of the next things I'm gonna talk about isn't something I'm gonna go online about because I really don't feel like I need to do too deep of a deep dive, but you are welcome to go onto the BoxyCharm website or their socials if you're curious about more reviews. I'm gonna be talking about this hip dot sponge. I got this cute little packaging, so cute. And you get a regular size sponge that clearly I've used for about a week. And you get this tiny little muffin here for maybe some contouring, some detail work. I have not used this yet, but I can tell you this is going to be in the giveaway. I got two of these and I'm so excited to share with you. I really enjoyed this sponge. Um, earlier in the year, I got the full collection of the ColourPop sponges. And to me, they had like two very different styles of sponges, even though there were five. Yes, the shapes were all different and they all had their own moments. But for me, there was there was a few that had that marshmallowy soft texture and bounce to them these definitely have that and the way I feel this is good with the, for the way I apply my foundation is I like a more medium coverage I feel like this really aids in not doing a complete full mask of makeup it doesn't help in my my skin the way I do makeup with that full face what it does is it makes your makeup look a bit more natural puts enough into your skin and pulls enough away and moves it around when you're applying it that it just makes it look more natural but if you're wanting a full heavy face for me personally and maybe it's the way I do makeup I don't notice it gives you that same look as it does maybe the velvet color pop sponge where it's got that velvety texture to it so it really presses all of the liquid foundation into your skin like that this just kind of nicely pulls a little bit of it away just to kind of make everything seem a little bit more smooth and natural, at least the way I think it does for my skin. And lately I've been leaning more into the medium coverages, sometimes even light coverages, and I think this applies it beautifully. Sometimes I do add just a little bit more foundation to certain spots on my face and spread it around, but I think overall at the end of my makeup application, it makes me look like I've just got really nice skin. You could tell I'm maybe wearing makeup, but I can also do that no makeup makeup look with this kind of sponge. And I really enjoy that. The price on these is $18. You get a cute little thing here for travel. This is definitely going in the giveaway though. I enjoy it. It's really soft. You can even like pull, I feel like your makeup down because don't neglect your neck ladies. Sometimes, especially a season shift, we're a little bit darker up here than we are down here. So you just got to pull it down a bit. This is a really nice sponge. It's nothing crazy, amazing to write home about. It's nothing revolutionary, but it is nice to get in a box. And this is definitely going in your giveaway along with something that I've already reviewed and forgot to tell you. The Farsali Moisturizing Serum is also going to be in the giveaway for you as well. So after doing my skincare this morning, using the sponge with my foundations and and concealers. I did it for both and it did a beautiful job spreading, making everything look seamless and nice. Then I went into something that I didn't know how I was going to feel about, but I ended up really enjoying it. This kind of goes along with that more natural look. If you're not looking to contour in the morning, if maybe you're just needing a fast face, if these colors work for you, I am enjoying this palette a lot so far. This is the Pretty Vulgar Nesting Bitch Face. 
I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube anymore. Everything is changing so quickly. We'll just call it the nesting bee face. Um, this is a full palette. And if you've been with BoxyCharm for a while, some of these shades and this highlighter may look familiar to you. We have received this brand before in our BoxyCharms, but we've got them as, as like separate pieces. I know for certain I actually got Glimmers of BS as a single highlighter in some bulky plastic packaging that I ended up having to declutter simply because the packaging I believe was falling apart. It was super bulky, hard to store, but the highlighter was so blingy I found that I could only really use it if I was doing a full face of glam. And now we have some bronzers and then a shimmery bronzer. I kind of use these as contours this morning as well. And we got some blushes in here. A lot to unpack in this palette and a mirror. I almost think for a face palette, and this is just my opinion and in the way I've been using it about the past week, I kind of wish these two colors were a little bit different. I wish there was just a bigger difference between these two colors, to be honest, because I felt like I was trying to go into this deeper tone for a little bit of a contour, but it still had a little bit of that red undertone to it that this felt like it had as well. And they weren't that drastically different in shade tone. So that's where I wish this palette was maybe a little bit different. But some mornings I would jump into the sun-kissed snitch and use a brush just to kind of lightly contour. I did that today with a fluffier brush. I'm kind of trying to mix up the brushes I'm using for a more natural look. Instead of going in with a contour brush that is a smaller brush and kind of gives you a bit of a heavier streak on your face, I've been gravitating more to something with a dome shape, a little bit fluffier. So it's kind of that more natural look. I used something like this this morning to kind of like start the look and I did the whole perimeter of my face with the cheekbones kind of carving out what God forgot to give me I always say and then went in with a little bit lighter and just kind of was marrying the two colors together doing some blending and some smoothing. I noticed on this side of my face and maybe that's just where I have a little bit more texture because I, I guess I sleep on both sides but I just noticed a little bit more texture here. I'm right handed it's probably where I put my phone a lot actually now that I think about it I should clean my phones more um, but over here it seemed pretty smooth. So I was just trying to kind of see how everything blended and married together and I thought it did a great job and it didn't skip. It looked really nice on the foundations, which also led me to think that some of my base products were doing a really good job too and not, you know, detracting from the makeup that I was trying. One of the first days I tried this, I did just use these blushes, even though I got another blush later on I'll talk about. And I thought they went on really great, but they are crazy pigmented. I even powdered down after at the end of my makeup routine just to kind of like try to even everything back out again but the, my cheeks were still very rosy so I was asking Adam what do you think of my makeup today and he was like um it's nice but it's very pink it's like you got a lot of pink going on so it's like okay lighter on the blush but it's very pigmented so take a very very light hand um, I can tell you this highlighter today definitely came to play on the one side of my face it was like woof how you doing? You could still see it right here. Girl is there. She's coming to the party. She's ready to glow. So if you like a nice icy blingy highlight for the holiday season coming up, this got you covered. I went in lighter over here because I forgot how bold that baby was. I went in much lighter over here to kind of give it a little bit more complimentary look, but still give that glow. And I was like, oh, that night that marries really nicely with this. So what I can tell you about the shade Ergo up here, which is more of a shimmery, hoo, 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 look at that baby. That one is a shimmery bronzer. In my head, a lot of you know, I really enjoy the Too Faced shimmery bronzer because I have told you over and over, this is the bronzer I love to use when I come on camera because it blurs the hell out of my face. Everything is blurred and I just look sun kissed and everything looks nice. This definitely showed more texture than this 100%. So I went in today after doing just the matte powders, went in, I believe, with something a little bit more like this that's fluffier. It's not as compact of a brush. And then just went over the areas where I wanted to maybe add a little bit of shimmer. And that was more on the cheeks, kind of up the cheekbone a bit. So I went in much lighter with this because it is definitely not that Too Faced that blurs. It showed so much texture that I was like, eek, that's, that's, that's a Halloween special. And I'm still going to try to get that in for you guys this year. Don't worry. I traveled with this over the weekend to a hotel and it was nice having like everything in one. I just noticed on the back here, it kind of gives you the ingredients and information for each product, which is really nice too. I used it to do a little bit of contouring down the nose, on the jawline and everything. And it looks very natural. 
I do wish, like I said, the main drawback for me with the matte powders, even though I think they're good, is that I wish there was a little bit more diversity with the color shades, even for me. So imagine how somebody else would feel with a darker skin tone. That's my biggest complaint about this. So this is a $32 value, and I think it is really, really good. Again, be careful with these highlighters and blushes because they are pigmented. So are the bronzers though. So let's see what other people are saying. I'm really curious. Cynthia G says, I loved, loved, loved all the shades and colors. Finally, this is the first box that had all the right shades and colors that I love for my skin. I love the skincare and I love the makeup, but this palette was awesome. I do not care for dark browns, but these were way more shades and colors I could use as a palette. Maureen K says, two hearts. Meh. Carrie M said, the colors were nice, just not into face palette. Diana C said two hearts. I like the shades. However, they were so patchy and I feel like they were chalk dry. Ooh, sounds like she probably has drier skin. I don't know what her skincare routine like looks like before, but I can say these two underneath worked well for this. Iris A says, I love everything about this palette. Dunya says five hearts. I love everything. And I use this every single day. Kelsey D said, I love, love, love this. I will be using this often. There's a lot of extra love on this. Every time I'm reading something, five hearts, five hearts. Okay. Here's one that says three hearts. These colors were way too bright for my light skin tone. I played around with blending these and trying to make them look somewhat natural. They just aren't great colors for my skin tone. That's why I kind of wish there was a little bit more variety because this is kind of one note as far as tones go. So much love online for this. A lot of people are giving this a lot of hearts. I'm trying to pull out some of the ones that are giving you some actual reviews. Megan M said three hearts. This product is okay. The shimmer colors were to die for, but the matte colors were chalky and didn't have great color payoff. See, I thought something totally different. This is why I do these. It's so interesting. I switched it on my arm and the pinks stained my arm. Oh, I swatched it. I swatched it on my arm and the pinks actually stained my arm. Okay, well that would mean they were pigmented then. The last product I'm gonna be talking about in my first box here, which is the base box, is something from a brand I really, really love. So when I didn't love this as much, I was honestly a little heartbroken, especially because it was a color that was gonna be perfect for me. What I'm pulling out now is the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Kiss Tinted Lip Butter. So I was really excited about this before I even like got the actual tube out. I read the box and I was like, yes, a lip butter. I told you guys recently how much I'm really enjoying lip butters right now because my lips have been really dry. We're definitely a chapstick moisturizing house. We have so many around our house. And I recently bought more of those Tarte lip buds, I think is what they're called. Love those a lot. So when I got this, I was really excited. I even told my husband, I was like, yes, I got a lip butter. And then when I realized it was tinted, I was like, you're not going to be interested. It's this pinky color. It's fine. And then I opened it and went to put it on my mouth. And then I literally stopped and had a moment of, I'm not a sensitive smell girl, but holy buckets. What is that? All right. Uh, reapplying it now. I do like it either on the lips bare because the color is pretty nice. It gives you this pink wash. Mine is in the shade teeny bikini. Um, but all I could really notice is I was like, okay, the color's pretty, but what the heck is that smell? And I literally walked it over to Adam and I said, this is like a reminiscent smell for me. What is it? Now I've heard from you guys in my Instagram. And if you don't follow me there, you can follow me right here to get little teasers behind the scenes, maybe a few extras. But I literally walked up to Adam and was like, smell this. Smell it. What does this remind you of? There's something from my childhood that is really sticking out to me that is reminiscent of this. And he literally smelled it, first did a little reaction, and he goes, old Play-Doh? And I was like, yeah, it has like an old Play-Doh smell. But then when I kind of teased this on Instagram, a lot of you started private messaging me and you were like, but why does it smell like stale popcorn? And then I was like, oh, now I smell that too, like that buttery, stale popcorn scent, which is kind of way more on brand for Sol de Janeiro anyway, compared to old Play-Doh. But now old Play-Doh is stuck in my head and that's Adam's fault, not mine, it's Adam's fault. The color is nice and it is pretty moisturizing. I put it on today over a liner and an Ofra nude pinkish lip because I wanted to have a base down for a little bit more color because this is nice for maybe a nude day. 
but as far as like just standing on its own it definitely my lips are already pretty pigmented so it looks pretty similar i was pretty sad to be honest with you because the smell is very strong and i'm not that sensitive to smells but once you put it on it's not like it dissipates you still smell either the old play-doh or stale butter popcorn on your lips it's such a bummer because i love sol de janeiro and like i said this color is so up my alley for one of my nude days and with this palette i was like i could do a very fresh easy breezy face with this put on a little lippy and go <sighs> this <sighs> i have a feeling all the reviews i'm going to be reading through are going to be talking about the scent but let's find out shall we there's three options you could get um the last one that's still available for four dollars if you're interested is a very bold orange shade mine's teeny bikini so it's a little bit more of that natural lip look maybe. Tazzy S says, I love how it's visible enough to get the lip color yet subtle enough that it looks like your natural lip color. Also moisturizing and she says it smells great. Again, this is why I do these deep dives. You may love this smell. It could be a Nicole thing and half of you in my Instagram thing. We don't care for it. Uh, the very next review from Emily C says, three hearts. I don't like the smell of it but it applies really nicely. Agree. That's how I feel too. Jennifer S gave this five hearts and she said, I love how it goes on smooth and silky. I really like the look of the container. The size is wonderful and it feels great on your lips. I'm not a really big fan of the smell. It kind of smells like Play-Doh. Thank you. You feel us. So not a pleasant scent for me. I'm going to still try to use it because it feels so nice and the color is very natural and it complements my skin tone. That is my same struggle. Did I write this and fall asleep and forgot and change my name to Jennifer? I don't know, but that's how I feel. <laughs> Jeanette says four and a half hearts. I love the lip butter, but the smell, not so much. Oh, it looks like Guinevere got the orange. She only gave this two hearts and says it's a bit too orange and it feels very sticky. Strong smell is the last note she made. Huh. Eleanor says, one heart, I did not care for this product and I had to send mine back. It smelled horrible, like rancid nuts or something. Hated the way it felt on my lips. You sent it back to BoxyCharm? Oh, I love, <laughs> that makes me giggle. I haven't read anything like that. That's hysterical. I sent it back. She, I think she thought hers was bad and that's why she's like, I got expired product. If that's the case, we all did. Unless you love this scent and then, you know, different strokes, different folks. Kayla P said, very hydrating. However, it tastes weird throughout the day. I think the taste and the smell are both things that I continually notice once I have it on my lips. And that might be why after the first few days, I literally just kind of like stopped using this, kind of fell off my radar. I was like, oh, other pretty shiny things in my beauty space. And it's like, this just fell away. And that's what I'm worried is going to happen in the future because I don't like how I can still smell it. And I don't like how I can, yeah, you taste like, yeah. Why'd I do that? Not my favorite thing in the box. Um, I think it's pretty, I don't even know how much, this was $20 originally, $20 MSRP. Okay. I would not buy this. Honestly, I would not buy this. It's not because I don't like the brand. It's not because it doesn't feel nice. It is mostly because of the smell, to be honest, and the taste. At least I got a color I enjoy, but I would not spend $20 on this. Final answer. Moving on. All right. I think we are done with this box. There are going to be some goodie giveaway items in here that I'm sad about in a way because I was really into it, but I don't think it's cruelty free. At least I couldn't find that it was cruelty free. We also have some Mac products coming up, some bold lippies and an eyeshadow palette. Lots to get into with this boxy premium. Out of the six items in this premium box, most of this is going to be going in a giveaway. I've only used two of the things in here out of the six. And there's one that I totally forgot about because I didn't think it was cruelty free. And then I realized this one was, I kept getting things confused. Hey, boxy charm, a little note. If you could start writing on here, cruelty free on the certain ones or put an asterisk or something, that would be awesome. Because the amount of time with this box, I had to do digging to find out what was cruelty free and wasn't cruelty free I was just like exhausted so something that I haven't gotten to try yet but I do want to dig into the reviews for because now I want to know is something that I want to try these are the go-to skincare exfoliating swipeys these are a single-use exfoliating pad it says because of all of the ingredients and the highly hydrating essential oils this is going to help to help improve your fine lines and deeply moisturizes it's supposed to give you a glow all the good things 
I got this confused with one other thing I'm going to be talking about in a second that isn't cruelty free. So I am excited to try this in the upcoming weeks. So let's do some digging online and find out together how, how this is going. Shannon B just left it easy and simple, gave it five hearts and said exfoliating wipes. Great idea. Smell fine and work well. Well, okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Brandy M says, happy with the first few uses I've tried this. Looking forward to seeing how this affects my skin long term. We know that's how skincare works anyway, so we're just doing our investigating now. Hey, okay, Kelly M said, these are very powerful and even sting a bit, but they work really well. Okay. Can't confirm or deny. I'll have to let you know. Taylor C said she's been using this for a week and hasn't noticed a difference so far for her skin. Um, Stephanie M just said these are very gentle, but a noticeable difference. Woke up with smooth skin after one use. This is why I do these because skin is subjective. Everybody's skin and environments are different. Maureen K gave this two hearts and said, not great. Tiny swipes you have to rinse with a weird texture interesting. The $6 ones from the drugstore are bigger and better. Okay, so Kimberly said she doesn't believe these belong in a premium box. She said these are bare bones basic exfoliating pads that I don't think belong here. I just like the fragrance and the ethanol in these. Okay, good to know. These are kind of split down the middle. I'm seeing a lot of middle of the road reviews or glowing or hating reviews. Like there's no like clear winner here. Whitney D said it made my face feel a little dry but it felt really clean. Lori H said, no, thank you. So tired of exfoliators. And I'll be real with you in this little tiny house. I, if you're new here, you may not know. My husband also likes to try my skincare and we have kind of similar skin. He has oilier skin too. And everything I keep bringing in from BoxyCharm, he's like, okay, so those are nice, but can, can, can you buy something that you like that isn't exfoliating? Cause I just want some stuff that doesn't always exfoliate and you shouldn't exfoliate all the time, but it does feel like we're getting a lot of those products. So I understand where this is coming from. And then on the opposite spectrum, Marcella reviewed this and gave it five hearts. She said, this is my favorite product in the box this month. I love I love anything exfoliating and we never seem to get any. Okay, so she has the opposite type of boxes then. Okay, so BoxyCharm doesn't give these to everybody. I just keep getting exfoliating things. Noted. I'm so excited about this. It works great and does the job. The only downfall is there are only 50 pads. Please add more exfoliating products to future things. See, that's all I get are exfoliating, whereas I'm kind of wanting more cleansers, more, more variety. Tamika said leave skin clean and moisturized. And then Laura said, I love these pads. So this has been pretty diverse in the reviews. Tell me below if you got these. Cause I, like I said, I have not gotten an opportunity to try these yet. So now I'm even more curious. Stay tuned and hit that, that subscribe bell and the notification bell. So you know when I upload so I can give you an update on this. Cause now I'm really curious. Okay. Can't lie. Had to take a little lunch break. Adam needed to come home from work to have lunch. So I had a little break see here and now we're going to get back into it. And in this premium box, I only really have two more things to talk about a lot of stuff in a giveaway though. So uh, let's start with the one that I had to do a lot more investigating with. This is the Illuminati eyeshadow palette. This is the glam palette designed by Isabella Badia. I may be saying her name wrong. I'm so sorry, girl. Um, I couldn't find anywhere on their websites or their social media if they were cruelty free. So I emailed the brand and then I private messaged the brand on Inst on Facebook, I think. Had to do a lot of digging to find that out and they are cruelty free, which is great. But then I'm almost like, why wouldn't you put that on your packaging or on your website or in the frequently asked comments? I don't know something. It is a newer brand though. So I'm going to give them that. Because I actually opened this baby up going, ooh, I really want to play with those. And now I'm going to be a hundred percent with you as I always am. I'm not in love. I'm really not. I've tried a lot of different shades. I don't have a lot of weird test um, footage for you. I wasn't feeling too great last week, but I did try a good amount of these. Going through this palette here, I can tell you I have tried this shade, this shade, this shade layered with these shades, definitely went into this, wearing these colors today on my eyes along with this gold shade, used the white. I have touched into most of this palette and I will be a thousand percent honest with you, I am really unimpressed with this formula. I am so sorry. This is a $48 palette and that's why I feel like I really need to be honest with you that I have better shadows that are way more inexpensive. Colourpop. 
I mean, right there for you. There's a lot of great brands out there. There's a lot of competition. And for me, these just weren't cutting it. I don't think they're very pigmented. The fallout was pretty messy. Today I went, I, I honestly also got stumped a lot with this palette. At first when I looked at it, I was visually like totally appealed by, I was like, ooh, some pastels for spring. Weird season to get it, but it's cool. I'll still dive into them. Warm cranberry colors for the fall in it. Gold shades, wow, that's awesome. And then I started to apply them to my eyes and I'm really just not impressed with this formula and I kind of get stumped after I realized that these were layering type shadows. You really need to dig into this palette if you want to get some pigment, get that color. Like if you're wanting this rye rye shade on your lid, you got to build it up a lot on a finger, on a brush to get it to look that way on the eye because swatches were deceiving with this one. Go ahead, go into sour rye rye. Um, I do have baby girl on today as well. Um, June 1st is on the outer part of my eye look today and it was really hard to get anything on the brush and then apply it to my eye. There was some fallout. I have used some of these shimmers like the shade rich today with my finger and it seemed really, really chunky. There was some fallout with that too. I needed to go back in with the brush to do some like buffing and blending because using a finger like I normally do with all other types of palettes. It was just so different. This this formula wasn't what I was kind of hoping it would be. It's my own personal review at the moment. I will dig into reviews here in a second. But let's just see how some live swatches go. Yeah, this is that Rye Rye shade I told you. You're going to have to, if you want it to look like the pan, you got to do a lot of work. This is what it looks like on my finger right here. Going back over the same swatch. Kind of... This is on my paler skin on the underarm, but it's definitely like disappearing, just kind of looking like veins. <laughs> it's blending in with my veins. That's hot. I can see some shimmer properties on it a little bit, and you're starting to see it now, but it, it just takes a lot of work, guys. This is that greener tone, sour. You can't really see it. Uh, this is the baby girl shade here. You can see that one a bit better. On the finger, this June 1st already looks like really crumbly and kind of not very pretty, like chunky. And that was the issue I was having with brushes too. So I would tap things off. I did everything I could to try to avoid fallout and that just wasn't happening. You can see the fallout kind of happening here. I went into Columbia, which is the white shade because I love to do that with one of my ColourPop Misunderstood palettes. It has a white that I like to lay down as a base on the lid. And then whatever color you put on top of it is supposed to be punched up more because it has this pure white base. I tried that with Rye Rye and Sour. It didn't really work for me. I had a really hard struggle bus of a time. I did the, the shade Rich on my eyes today, and this is the color I've gone into a couple times. You can definitely see how it's looking kind of even like not that great in the palette because it's kind of having so much fallout. I've touched into Izzy, and even the shade Trust here is super patchy. And this is a brown shade that should be really universal. I have some of it under my outer corner. I tried using that in my crease one of the days. It's so patchy. I'll try that brown shade first. You can kind of see how it's like, it actually looks on camera, at least right here, pretty good. Um, when you apply it to your eye with a brush, I really struggled with it. This is that gold shade, has the chunkiness to it, but you can keep working with it. All right, so this one I was really curious about. This is that black with gold shimmer. I could not even get this to pull up on my eyes. It's so gritty. Ooh, I don't know if you can see the texture on this, but it's extremely gritty. I tried putting this over a smoother shadow and it was still not my favorite. I have tried so many days off camera to try to get pretty looks for you. I may have some pictures with some of them. If I do, I'll insert them. I just don't really like this palette and compared to what I have in my tiny little beauty space, I only keep the things that I love and will continually use, like to be reminded of as a new season approaches. I was really hopeful for this and was really excited for it, but like even this 1996 shade here that looks like it's a gold and that it should be really pretty. On the lids, I could not get it with a flat brush, a wet brush, a finger. On the finger here, it looks fine, but when you go to swipe, there's no pigment. There's, I mean, for me and my skin, 
Maybe it's a Nicole thing. This swatch is going to look good because I'm going to press it on there like a mother. But on your eye, it just doesn't do as well. So that's why people you see a lot on YouTube where they're like, yeah, here's swatches, but on the eye, this is what it's like. Or try it on your eyes before you assume. Because I saw this and I was really excited. I wanted it to be cruelty free. And I just didn't like it. And now I've had on this eyeshadow look today, which is all of this since about eight this morning. And I've had these shadows on my eyes today for about four and a half hours. I really struggled, first of all, for a starting look. So I did go back into the Pretty B palette for just at least a easy, creamy transition shade to put into my crease before I went into any of these that are a bit bolder. Struggled to come up with a look. And then I thought, okay, let's try the rosé and then the rich add a little bit of the trust to the outside. I think there's some baby girl in there too, lower down. It's just not my favorite eye look. It's not my favorite shadows to play with. I felt like it took a lot of work. There was a lot of layering, a lot of going back and forth into the shades. Whereas that's fine, but I have other sh palettes and shades that are pretty much the same colors almost, if not the same, that I don't have to work as hard for a good look. And I let you guys know recently in some of my videos, I'm looking for ease of use right now. I'm looking for a simple but beautiful, glorious. And the one shade that I was really, really broken hearted of, I actually went over the top of it on um, one of the days I was trying it because it was so god awful. And it's this one that's supposed to be a standout, this purple haze shade, purple dream, sorry, purple dream. It is just, I'm, I'm in here, I'm digging in. And then I'm finally getting some, some payoff on the finger. But when you apply it, it just doesn't look right. It looks very chunky. I didn't enjoy it on my lid at all. And I was using all the other shades in there because I try to use all of the shades in one palette to give you a full look and to have a better opinion and I'm not swayed by some other formula. I had to go over the top of this because when I was trying to get it to show up, it it was chunky and uneven. And then I just decided to go in with, a, with another palette entirely. And then this kind of came through and it was okay when it was coming through another shadow. I don't even know if I'm articulating this well because quite frankly, I'm just disappointed in this. Okay, so this is available in the BoxyCharm add-ons for $12, which is a way more reasonable price if you ask me for this formula compared to 48. I'm sorry, it's just not one of my favorites and I'm so sad about it because this color story, I was actually excited about it. I have some, I have a feeling some people are gonna be like, what am I supposed to do with this? Because it is a bit different, and I like to go out of my comfort zone sometimes, but this formula just wasn't cutting it for me. So let's just see what people are saying. Ooh, so I'm already just seeing the top portion up here where it kind of gives you like the overview of what people are thinking. Out of 3,214 reviews at the moment, it has three hearts. Courtney R says, as pretty as the colors are, you really have to keep dipping in to get the best payoff feels smooth, but it also feels chalky. Yeah. Hoping the more I use it, the more I'll like it. Jerry Lynn R gave this four and a half hearts, which is pretty good review. And she said, always enjoy getting an eyeshadow palette. Some of the shimmer shades in the top row are still a little difficult to deal with though. Yeah, cause you can't see them. Mary Bell gave this three hearts and said, it's a little patchy. I was hoping for better quality. <laughs> Kristen said her 16 year old stole it from me. She want mine? Do you have a 16 year old? Uh, I'll give it to her. Cheyenne said two hearts, not much color payoff. This is honestly more of a topper palette. And that's, that applies to all of these, not just this one shade or not just, you know, random ones. It's like the whole palette. Oh, and then I just got to the second page of reviews and I just see nothing but a bunch of one hearts. Christine C said clown makeup. Mariana B said one heart. I love palettes, but the quality of this one was questionable. Yeah. Rihanna S said shadow didn't stay on for long, sad face. One heart. Yeah, I was also worried knowing I had to stop for lunch in the middle of this. I was like, I wonder if my eyeshadow is actually still going to be there. And it's starting to wear down for sure. And again, I've only had this on for four hours. I didn't care for this at all, says Tracy. Summer W says, I didn't like this palette at all. It's not a color story or quality that I would use. I expected to hear stuff about the color story because I know this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, honestly. 
but the quality is what I was curious how people were feeling because I thought maybe it's just me and my fickle skin but it doesn't seem like it Teresa had the same idea I did one heart not for me but this will make a great Christmas gift for my teenage niece I apparently need some teenagers in my life and I never thought I would say that so it sounds like it's pretty con you know uh, amongst the collective brain of all of these amazing boxy babes this is kind of a miss for us too so sad but true but glad to know it wasn't just me and me just kind of maybe being like I'm just cra crapping on this palette I wanted to like it I really sought out to find out if it was cruelty free and if I could use it because I was excited about it something I did ask for in my premium box was this Kosas blush this is a color and light palette it is a powder blush and highlighter mine is in the shade papaya 1972 I picked this as my choice item I was a little disappointed in what the options were for this month as far as choice went so when I was looking at what they were I went and looked at what the color stories looked like um, on the actual company's website so I could really see which color tone would potentially match me the best and this is the one I ended up picking and I do like it I tend to gravitate especially when I have a little bit of color going and I live in Florida so it is feels like summer a little bit longer than most places I tend to gravitate to the corals in the pink tones because that for me just kind of has this summery springy tint to the face and this is the kind of shade I like as far as calling this a highlighter though is that what they're actually calling this this is a powder blush and highlighter I would personally disagree with that I'm a little disappointed in that because I kind of saw this packaging saw the branding and I thought oh this feels luxe just based off the look so when I received it I'll be real I was disappointed what is the MSRP $34 yeah so in my mind I was expecting $34 value it's got nice packaging it's a nice blush don't get me wrong the blush is what I am wearing today this is very nice it just applies easily to the cheeks I applied this on the days that I wasn't using that full face palette that has the very pigmented blush so I knew that this would be a nice you know balance but calling this a highlighter kind of seems like a joke I don't know it's 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 just a powder there's no luminosity in my mind to it maybe there's a okay there's a faint luminosity as I'm looking at it here it just looks more like a powder not a highlighter so for me this is like blush and extremely light blush that I don't know if I would ever touch it I also had a cream blush but as we all know oily skin girl I don't really gravitate to any cream products so I don't seek those out this in the add-ons is nine dollars right now and they do have still looks like four options at the moment I'm filming this so there are options maybe I should have picked a different tone but I like this blush color the blush is great I just don't think this is a highlighter like obviously I have on that blingy highlighter from the resting B face palette cuz hello it's a nice blush but I don't think it's anything to write home about and I definitely wouldn't spend the full retail price on it personally but I'm curious what other people would say okay so Yvette said one heart I got this in my box and OMG there is so much kickback that the highlighter was all over the place when I put it on and the blush was not any better not a fan some people like Maureen are saying that it's very pigmented and maybe too dark because she has a very pale complexion. Ooh, it looks like Teresa got this in a base box and now she's getting it in her premium box. Okay. I would have been okay with getting this in a base box too. That's, I, I guess I hadn't thought about it that way until everybody's bringing this up. Like, yeah, I would have preferred this in a base box and then I feel like I wouldn't have been as attached to expecting a higher quality. Uh, Phyllis said, two hearts, not caring much for this blush. Maybe once I give it a little bit longer, I'll change my mind. But at this point, it's a no for me. This is this was my choice item and I'm sad that it's a flop. I am too. I'm kind of sad. This is why I love this blush because I think this is a beautiful tone, especially for my cheeks. And the highlighter just disappears and it is so like I had to cake it on to kind of make it feel like it's got some glow to it. To me, it just feels like a powder that has maybe a tint of glow to it. I could never brand that as a highlighter if I were the marketing company. I just don't think I could do it because it's so powdery. It's so dusty powdery you don't think of that when you think of a good quality highlighter Ugh. I think some people are reviewing the cream version in the powder version they have it separated online but I'm seeing a lot of people talking about the wetness of the product or the creaminess of the cream blush so I'm trying to dig through here 
So keep that in mind too when you're looking at reviews. Sometimes people get a different version. Some beautiful lashes for this upcoming holiday season are going to be going into this giveaway and I think some babes that love a good dramatic wing are going to love these MAC lashes. These are the 70s lash dramatically winged out lashes with a unique crossover pattern. These look super fun for this upcoming holiday season. These are definitely in the giveaway and something that I'm a little sad that I couldn't try Try because I'm pretty positive this line with this brand that is French is not cruelty free but they do have a vegan like line but I don't think this is part of it this is the Clarins instant smooth and perfecting touch $39 MSRP a lot of people were excited to get this in their boxes this is plant enriched it's supposed to smooth wrinkles and fine lines blur effect texture apply alone before makeup it's got a lot of great claims all over this box I'm so sad I can't try it it is absolutely going in the giveaway for one of you lucky babes one of the last things that's going in the giveaway for the premium box there's still a whole other box over here that is mostly giveaway guys this is a red lippy and we are coming into that red lip season for so many of us I'm not not really much of a red lip girl which is the only reason I didn't try this on for you guys and let you know my personal review for it but you can dig online for other people's reviews if you are a lover of a good red lippy this is a Laura Geller lippy and she's got some products that I have told you are my favorites this is the 50 kisses lip locking liquid color this is a $21 MSRP pure pigmented formula stays true with soft satiny color and and stays put from morning to night this one is in the shade pink pucker I know it says it's pink but it's also like so close to red that it's that season you know what guys I'm putting this in the giveaway for one of you guys now there is only one item I was able to try that was not a repeat item in my next box that I actually really enjoy this packaging may not appear very bougie, but this is a $69 Grown Alchemist Matte Balancing Moisturizer. It's a lightweight moisturizer that hydrates the facial skin while balancing the skin's level of oils, leaving the skin with a matte finish. As an oily, comboy girl, when I saw matte, I was like, I'm going to try this. I don't care that it looks like something maybe our grandparents had for toothpaste. I don't know. I have tried this several days again with different foundations and other things just like I had previously with some of the more dewy glowy items and I'm really enjoying this as well. I've even worn this on just kind of standalone days just as a moisturizer and my skin has looked totally fine. I've not had any irritations. I think it's done a really good job of also being at like a base and then putting makeup on top. Everything looked fine and nothing has been too dewy or glowy either when I've used this. I still want to play around with this more before I give it too in-depth a review. Woo! 91% off in the BoxyCharm add-ons. Normally $69. It is six bucks in the add-on and it looks like it is still available. So let's see what people are saying. Let's see if it's worth it. Um, out of 2,207 reviews at the moment, it has four and a half hearts. Iris said, I have never, ever heard of this. Me either, Iris. She said, but I still really like it though. Ooh, Elise said, helps a lot with the oily spots on my face. Loved this. My favorite item out of the box, says Kristen. Whoa. Christopher C. said, I love it. Works great. It's normally hard to find a moisturizer for combination skin, right? That's why I was so excited to see that this was going to be met. Lindsay W. gave this five hearts and she said, this is a product I would never, in all caps, give a second thought or even consider purchasing. I admit it, I was kind of PO'd when I saw this in my box, but dot, dot, dot. We gotta add the dots for dramatic effect. I gave it a go and holy cow! Beyond pleasantly surprised. Now I, <laughs> now actually one of my most favorite ever face moisturizers. Boxy seems to just know me better than I know myself. That was a fun review to read, I'm not gonna lie. Everything else in this box is stuff that I have already told you is in the giveaway. Oh, including the Sol de Janeiro. This is in the giveaway along with the Farsali the rest the nesting with we'll call it witch face it's halloween hip dot sponges clarins smooth skincare laura geller lippy and lashes i think that's everything if i missed anything i'll try to leave it in the comments below but you know 
three boxes a month. This is a lot of product, and this is the heftiest giveaway. Woof, man. To enter this giveaway, check out the description box below. And for a second entry, I always remind you guys, you can enter twice for this. Be subscribed here, comment below, all the good stuff. But then go over to my Instagram and follow me there. Like and comment on the picture from today about BoxyCharm. And that is it. Super easy breezy giveaway. Don't forget to tell me how to get in touch with you, though, because YouTube makes that hard. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been so much fun to kind of go through with you guys, let you know what I am loving and really appreciating and some stuff that's just kind of been a miss for me, but apparently a lot of other people do. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you happen to be new to my loud, weird, crazy, unique channel and a lot of times about BoxyCharm, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down here so you don't miss out on all of my fun, loud, weird, unique videos that I do every single week. And I do have some amazing amazing content coming up for you guys and if it is your time to go I totally understand but if you want to hang out longer there will be some new videos popping up for you right now see you guys in the next one bye friends